Greetings, this is Greg. Why is it that the Mitsubishi Zero's horizontal stabilizer and elevator are located so far forward relative to the vertical stab and rudder? This is extremely unusual in aircraft design, and I don't know of any other World War II era airplane that's set up this way. The Thunderbolt's tail isn't this way, neither is the Hellcats, nor the Spitfire, or the BF-109s. Even the Zero's closest relative, the Nakajima KI-43 Oscar, is not set up this way. So what gives? Well, the answer is that the Zero's design team had access to a special wind tunnel called a spin tunnel to simulate extremely high angles of attack. They found that by moving the horizontal stab and elevator forward, they could significantly improve rudder performance at very high angles of attack. To understand this, Let's have a quick review of some basic aerodynamic principles. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line of the wing and the relative wind. I find it helps to look at a real airplane to visualize this. If this P-47 taxis forward, the relative wind will be parallel to the ground, creating a large angle of attack. Now at extreme angles of attack, such as those in a deep stall or a fully developed spin, the airflow to the rudder would be disrupted by the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. In order to get the rudder out of the disrupted airflow, the Zero's designers moved the horizontal stab and elevator forward. This worked, and it allowed the Zero's rudder to maintain effectiveness at extreme angles of attack. This enabled the Zero to excel at any maneuver in which rudder control was a key factor, including spins, snap rolls, and hammerheads. Combined with the Zero's other design factors and innovations, this helped make it the most maneuverable fighter of its time and the Japanese pilots were able to exploit this advantage in the early phases of the war. However, this entire design philosophy, the philosophy of agility above all other factors, was really obsolete by the time World War II started, and it wasn't long before U.S. fighters learned to avoid maneuvering fights with the Zero and use hit-and-run tactics favoring their superior speed and firepower to knock out the Zeros before they had a chance to engage in a turning fight. If you have any comments or thoughts, I would appreciate you leaving them in the section below. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.